Hey everyone, Dion here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to add loading animation to your RetroPie. I like to hide the nuts and bolts of a project and find ways to polish things any way I can. One way I found to add some additional polish to a RetroPie setup is by adding a loading animation. A loading animation is different than the splash screen you see when you first boot up a RetroPie. The loading animation is something you can set to show up when you launch or exit a game or ROM. Let's jump right in and check it out. All right, the first thing you'll want to make sure of is that your RetroPie is booted up and connected to your network. What we'll do is use WinSCP to connect to our RetroPie. Let's go ahead and get that pulled up. And because you're on the same network, you should be able to use just the host name to get on your RetroPie. So we can put RetroPie in for the host name. Username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. And what this will do is just dump us in the home folder for the Pi user. We're going to go up a little bit a couple of times. Um, so we're at the root of the system. And here we're going to go into the options folder, the RetroPie folder, and configs, and then all. And this is where we're going to be putting our uh, loading animation as well as creating a couple of files to control what happens with that animation. So let's jump on to YouTube and we'll go download a loading animation to use. If we jump over to my channel on YouTube, I've created some loading animations. I've got one that matches the splash screen that I created. Um, if you've seen that video, basically it's just a few little dots that go across the screen that kind of give the impression that something's loading. And if you jump over here to the playlists on my channel, there's a RetroPie animation playlist. And the one we are after is this RetroPie loading animation 16 by 9. And we can let it play here. As you can see, it's just got a few dots that run across the screen. There are a couple of versions of this. There's a, oh, scroll a little bit too far there. There's a couple of versions. There's one that's a six second duration and a three second duration. Let's go ahead and download the one that's three seconds. And that'll just save, it's a super small file. Um, so that's saved in our downloads folder. We can go ahead and close that. And I've already browsed to it over here um, inside of WinSCP before, and so it remembered it. But yeah, it's just nine kilobytes. Um, uh, it's an MKV file, so we can go ahead and just drag and drop that onto our RetroPie. Now we're gonna create a couple of files. The first one is the file that will play the animation when you open or start game or ROM file. So we'll create a new file, and this file we're going to call run command dash on start dot sh. And it's a shell script. This will automatically open WinSCP's editor. And up here, um, we'll start typing a little bit, but we're going to have to change the encoding to keep it from causing some problems. So I'll show you that here in just a sec but we're going to start typing here so this is a bash script so we need to let the system know it's a bash script so we got to type um, pound exclamation slash bin slash bash so that's how you start a bash script and then what we're going to do is type omx player dash b and then a single quote or a sorry a double quote and then we're going to do slash opt slash retro pie slash configs slash all slash and then the name of our video file which is launching dash 3s dot mkv and then another double quote and then a little uh, greater than and then the 
let's see, a slash dev slash null. And then at the end here, we've got an and symbol. So basically what this does is it's going to use OMX player to play our video file. And then if there's any weird output or anything from that, it's gonna just send it off into oblivion. And then it'll continue launching the ROM after that. So we can go ahead and save this. And then after we've saved it, come up here and double check and make sure, switch this to UTF, switch the encoding to UTF-8 and double check that your double quotes here are in fact double quotes. The other, um, the other encoding here will change the double quotes to weird left curly double quote and right curly double quote, which will break this. Um, so just make sure it's UTF-8 up here and make sure the double quotes look like they're just straight up and down. So yeah, we'll save that. And next, um, what you'll need to do is, so here's the file we created. We need to change the properties of our file and make sure that it's executable. So we check these three boxes that with the X to say that it's executable and you'll see that it changed it over here on the right. We've got the X's. So yep, our file's executable. So now that we've got our file here, what we're gonna do is create our second file. So this one, we've got, we're gonna do a new file. And this one has almost the same name, except instead of on start, this one is going to be on end. And what you can do if you want is just come edit the other file. And we'll just copy that. Close that one. We'll jump over here to this file, paste it in, save, and again, make sure, switch your encoding to UTF-8, and just double check these quotes. And we'll control S to save, and we can refresh the folder here just to make sure. And then also, let's edit the properties on this one and make this one executable as well. All right, that looks good. So that's everything we need to do to set up the files and the video file on our RetroPie. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to our RetroPie and see how it looks. All right, I've got my RetroPie here and the first thing we're actually gonna do is we're going to restart. Just to make sure all of our changes load. All right, now that we're back in our RetroPie, um, we'll jump over to one of the systems and I've just got a couple of ROMs on here. We can go ahead and launch one of these. You can see our little loading animation go there. All right, we've got our ROM up. And now if we quit, you can see our little loading animation go as well. And we're back on our menu. Now you may have noticed the little launch menu that popped up there for a second after our animation. And there is a way to disable this. Typically you only need to have that launch menu there if you're, if you wanna change the emulator that a ROM is using. And normally you only have to do that for arcade ROMs. RetroPie is set up pretty well to begin with, so you, you don't need, really need to make a lot of modifications to that. So if we go back here and we jump over to the RetroPie menu and we go here to RetroPie Setup. Wait a second for this to load. And if we go down to Configuration Tools and you can see right there at the bottom, Run Command. We'll navigate to that. And right here at the top, you can see Launch Menu currently enabled. Just click on that to disable it. We can go to Exit, Back, Exit, and this will take us back to Emulation Station. If we hit Back again and jump over to a ROM and we launch this ROM, you'll see that that no longer pops up. So we just have our loading animation and it jumps us right into the game. And now if we quit the game, it'll play our little animation again, and we're back to Emulation Station. As you can see, adding a loading animation is a small way to add some additional polish to your RetroPie setup. 
The goal here is to hide anything to do with the system and make it as clean of an experience as you can for the end user. Anyway, I hope this helps you level up your own RetroPie setup. As always, thank you guys for stopping in and I appreciate any feedback. If you have a suggestion for a video, hit me up on one of my socials and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.